Hey everybody, welcome Edgy Tim here for another Edgy Zoom. And you know, I just I, I must be slumming because I went to NAS and now I'm going to Marist for kids. And it's you know, it's really I mean, could it get any worse? I mean, I guess maybe Brother Ice kids, but we'll we'll save that for another time. Just joking. Very happy to have two of the finest from Chicago Marist joining me. And could have went skills, yeah, I could have, but nah. Let's talk. Let's talk to the real football players, the guys up front. Two linemen joining me. First of all, we'll start with the senior. And first of all, Pat, it must sound a little weird that you're a senior now, but uh, Notre Dame verbal commit, uh, offensive lineman extraordinary, Pat Coogan joining us. And Pat, first of all, uh, thanks for uh, taking some time out and uh, no appreciate, Thank you. appreciate being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we are also going to go to the slightly younger yet also highly in demand offensive lineman from Marist. He is going to be a junior Danny McGuire, but otherwise known as Deuce. We got to get into that nickname um, before this thing's over, but the uh, Deuce, yep. appreciate you taking time. And uh, yep. I'll be Thanks honest, you're the first kid in the rivals database I've ever added with the first name of Deuce. So you should, should feel very honored by that. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll start with Pat. Pat, um, team-wise, where are you guys at at this time of year? Did you guys wrap up team camp or whatever you, you know you guys are allowed to do, or are you still in the process of doing that this week as well? So we started our team camp last Monday, and we're going three weeks um, lifting, um, meetings, obviously, and then on the field, conditioning, stuff like that, obviously social distancing, wearing masks all the time just trying to be as safe as possible. And then, but it's been going really well. I mean, it's really good to get back with the guys. It feels a little bit more like reality playing football again. But obviously with the whole situation going on, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So we're just taking it one day at a time, controlling what we can control. Yeah, I was I was going to ask both of you guys, and I'll, since you brought it up, I'll keep it there. Um, Head, how do you balance it? I mean, you, you have to pay attention to what's going on, obviously. Uh, it's obviously very important to you guys and really everyone around high school football. But we don't know what's going to happen. Um, so how do you pay attention, but also, on the other hand, try not to focus too much? Is it is it really just a case of just keeping your head down and going back to work? Yeah, I would say so, definitely. I mean, our coaches tell us all the time that two things you can control at practice is your energy and enthusiasm and your effort. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of like the head, head down, go to work mentality. Um, we don't, I, like I said before, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but uh, while we're together, why not make the most of it? So, I mean, we're, we're just getting after it every day, hoping that each day becomes more optimistic. And I know there's a power in optimism for sure. So yep. just like you said, head down, get to work. Um, before we go to Deuce, I want to uh, stay with you. We'll talk about just your commitment to Notre Dame a bit. Um, made it back in mid-April. I mean, I had talked to you enough to know that once they offered, it was kind of a done deal. Um, I don't know if that was actually the case or not, but it seemed that way to me. Um, when you look back now and, and you see that, you know, first of all, I don't think any of us would have thought this pandemic would still be going the way it's going back in April when you made the decision. But, I mean, let's face it, we were about a month into this at the time. And um, just, first of all, was that the case with Notre Dame? Was it was it pretty much a done deal once they offered? Um, Kind of, kind of not really. I mean, I still had some really, really good schools um, right. that I was considering, so I wasn't just going to throw them out the window. But – I knew what Notre Dame offered, and I knew I, I would would have loved to play there, and I am going to love to play there. So, uh, obviously, it was they they shot up to my number one, but I was still considering some great schools. Um, you you're not a kid that I would say was was absolutely enthralled by the recruiting process. Is that fair? Yeah, I would say that's fair. I I try to stay as humble as possible. Okay. I, I know a lot of people love the Twitter game, but it's not really for me. Yeah, I, I, I always got that feeling from you. And um, when you look at the timing of the decision, um, I can imagine it makes you feel maybe even a little bit better, the fact that you made it when you did it and kind of didn't have to sit through this. And 
because there's a lot of kids out there that, you know, they either, they haven't been able to make visits or for whatever reason they haven't committed or, but I can imagine in your situation being done and kind of locked up, it's got to feel even, even a little bit better if that's possible with everything going on now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm so glad I made the decision when I did and to the school that I did, they've been, they've been throughout the process. They've always been checking in on me and my family. And um, I know like when back in April, we thought we were going to be able to take visits in June. So me and my family were like, should we just wait it out, take visits in June, blah, 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 go through the process. And I, I'm really glad that I made the decision when I did. Yeah. Deuce, let's go to you. Um, your story, a little bit different, a little bit interesting um, in a couple of different regards. I mean, you didn't start right away last year. You uh, okay. you kind of had to uh, kind of earn your way a little bit. And I think it was about, well, you can fill us in, but I think about mid-season when you finally got a chance to get into the lineup. And, uh, man, things have taken off from there for you. I mean, you yep. have picked up some serious scholarship offers. And uh, so I, I guess the thought is um, taking into account kind of how your season went, how you finished the year. Um, and then with your recruiting, and I think I joked with you more than a few times, you're one of the few kids whose recruiting stock is taken off during a pandemic. Um, did you really see it coming? Uh, no, not for the most part. Like, you know, like you said, not really many stock rises uh, during a pandemic. So I didn't really expect it that much to rise. Um, who was your first? Do you remember? First offer? Uh, my first offer was Western Michigan. Um really surprised did you have a feeling it was coming or did they just kind of hitch out of left field uh I didn't know it was certainly going to be them but I knew like it, my time was coming eventually I didn't think it was going to be that soon so like I was kind of caught off guard but at the same time I kind of knew my time was coming um walk us through those first couple of games when you mm -hmm. finally got a chance to start um yeah in, in case people aren't, aren't aware uh Maris plays in the uh, CCL Blue, and uh, week in and week out, there's there's nothing easy. So I imagine you went up against some uh, really good competition right off the get go. Just talk about how long it kind of took before you really settled in and felt like, yeah, okay, I got this. Uh, I mean, I felt like I had it right from the beginning because, like, I was always practicing with the varsity team. Like, you know, I was always getting some looks. So, like, I always felt like I was, I always, I felt like I was good out there. Um, as far as how the recruiting is, has gone, as we mentioned, several offers, um, got, what are you at about a dozen or more now, I think. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. Um, yet as, as Pat mentioned, you, you probably, if, if it would have been a quote unquote normal this summer, mm -hmm. you probably would have made about a half dozen or more visits or camps by now, but, uh, mm -hmm. that didn't happen. So, I mean, how serious can you or have you taken recruiting so far or is it more of a case of yeah I'll do the zoom calls with the coaches or whatever and kind of look into things but kind of where are you at as far as kind of looking at what you have and, and maybe trying to sort some things out or have you not even gotten to that point yet yeah you know I'm just trying to try to take it slow you know just wait out the process wait till I could take some visits but like I've driven up to uh I've driven up to Michigan State what kind of walk around their campus and stuff like that but uh yeah, no, other than that, I'm just trying to really just kind of take it slow. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I know it seems like more and more kids are starting to do that where they're just getting in the car with their families and just going and driving around. Um, in some regards, maybe kind of cool because you're, you're yeah. not getting the, the let's say, the, the kind of pointing you to see the good things. You're getting a chance to kind of see everything. But, yeah, um, I mean, after a while, you kind of got to look and like, okay, well, I guess that's it. I mean, just walk us through when you went up to Michigan State and kind of what you guys did. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it's a whole different perspective. Like you said, like uh, not being able to see like what was like an actual recruiting visit. You know, we just kind of walked around the campus, saw like a bunch of the like more of like an academic and campus life kind of approach at it. And you found it worth making the yeah. trip? Doing yeah, it? it was worth making the trip. It was, I really liked it. It's good. Um, Pat, I want to go back to 2019 a little bit. Um, kind of a, I, I don't, I don't, I guess the best way to describe it. I don't know if weird is the best way to describe it. It was, it was kind of an up and down season for you guys, but you know, it, it, it wasn't like 
you were getting blown out by anyone. You guys were the games that you were losing. You were in literally every game. Um, was there was there a key point? I mean, I, I know how big the Loyola game was in Week Nine. Was it then or before then when maybe things started to click with you guys a little bit and said, hey, okay, we might have just figured something out here? What, what, what was that point last year? Um, man, yeah, you, it was a up-and-down season for sure. Um, but like you said, we were in every game. So um, I would say that Loyola game, week nine, uh, sitting at four and four to get in the playoffs. Yeah, it was there. It was a Saturday. I mean, there was everything was, was on the line. Yeah, it was it was rainy, um, super rainy, and then they drove. They drove down, maybe like fifty yards. They were in the red zone, and then we picked them off, and then, and then we got the ball and we drove down all the way, like seventy yards, and we yeah. just got all that momentum and energy. And obviously, a program like Loyola, they're not easy to push around at all. And so, once we saw that we can really hang with the guy, with these guys, the energy and um, momentum just went through the roof. Um, and, and you you didn't push them around once; you push them around twice, and that 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 does not that does not happen very often. Um, you end up losing to Lincoln Way East. They end up moving on to the playoffs, but Deuce, I'll throw it to you. I got to imagine mm -hmm. just from a confidence standpoint, I mean, there's never such thing as a good loss at the end of the season without winning a state title. But I got to imagine the coach's message after that, the end of the year had to be, you know, Hey, we got a lot to build on. And was that kind of the feeling within the team as well? Like, Hey, you know what, you know, we're able to bounce back this year a little bit and make a decent run, but boy, wait till next year. Was that kind of the. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, like, we felt like, yeah, we have a lot of guys returning. We have a lot, like, momentum we could build off, like, and we really think this would be the year that we could really finish and finish win State this year. Um, as far as recruiting, Deuce, with you, mm -hmm. did you talk to Pat about this stuff at all? Yeah, yeah, he uh, always show me some tips and, like, how to go about it and stuff like that and what, like, what to look for in a school and stuff like that or, like, what he thought. So it's always very helpful. Um, as far as, and this will be for both of you, as far as 2020, um, again, this is a question I, I might have even asked you guys already, but I'll ask it again on this forum. Um, Deuce, as far as your game from, from last year, and we, we talked about you came a long way last year. Now you know what's expected. Now you know what you're going to run into every week. So mm -hmm. how is your game going to be different? What are we going to see from you this year that maybe we didn't see a year ago? Yeah, I'm definitely going to play way more aggressive, play with a little bit more bend, and play uh, play with a lot better footwork and way more quickness. Um, you mentioned the bend and the quickness. I mean, what was – was it a different approach? Did you work more speed and agility this year? What did you change workout-wise a little bit differently this year? Uh, yeah, I just think it's more of like uh, just like growing as a player, just like getting after it more this year and just like – just overall just stepping up my game. Pat, I got to imagine, you know, senior year, and you've been playing for a while now on the varsity. I got to imagine you're looking forward just to obviously getting out there. But, you know, everyone talks about how the game will slow down for you. I got to imagine the game's going to really seem slower to you this year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm experienced. So, but it's always good to show your experience to the whole offense as well and lead them. So that's what I've really been focusing on this year in the offseason, just being the best leader I can be, being the best teammate I can be. And then just, yeah, I mean, it's my, the last year out of out of three. So um, I'm excited for it. I'm really looking forward to it. I, he said we – he already said it, but we have an unbelievable team coming back this year. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and a question for both of you guys. We'll start with Pat. Pat, who's the best team leader you've played with in your career up till now? Who's the one guy you point at and say, wow, this guy really showed us a lot and kind of handled his business the way I, I think I like and a way to go about it. And I know you've had a lot, but who's one that sticks out to you? I would say, um, I'd say Mike Marquette and George Finelli, my sophomore year. Yeah. Mike Marquette was that scrappy get after it guy. And just from watching him and absolutely you know, just, just gut gutsy. 
just a just a gutsy, hard nosed, no nonsense player for sure. For sure. What, yeah. what was it about him? Was it was it were they rah rah guys? Were they lead by example guys? What was personality wise? What was it about him? Yeah, they they weren't really rah rah guys, but I think they caught all of our attention with how hard they worked, and then just obviously, um, I think we went eight and one that year, my sophomore year. So even when things weren't going our way, they would just lead us by example and lead us by, you know, small quotes of leadership and saying what what needs to be said. And it, it wasn't yelling or screaming; it was just picking each other up and being the best teammate they could be for sure. And then. Obviously, George was was um, the senior on the offensive line, so he really helped me when I was a sophomore. And just like how Deuce was, I mean, George was a huge, huge influence on my game. Deuce, you, leadership-wise? Oh, uh, yeah, I'd probably say – I mean, yeah, I'd probably say either uh, probably Hayden Mikesell or A.J. Marquette on the offensive side of the ball. They yeah. were uh, They were always put their head down and work type guys, and – rarely lead off of example yeah Hayden Hayden I thought was a really good story last year I mean he really I thought finished finished the year really strong and and again just just another kid that just went out there and got it done so yeah I uh definitely really really was impressed with Hayden last year as well um we talked about 2020 um I mean, who's the one or two guys, and Deuce, I'll start with you, the one or two guys that maybe people don't know a lot about on Marist, but maybe they should. Who would maybe yeah. one or two of those guys be? Uh, yeah, I'd probably definitely say Jimmy Rolder on the uh, defensive side of the ball, who uh, got a little bit of playing time in the uh, playoffs last season, really made the most of it, and he's really going to make a big impact this year on the defensive side of the ball. Pat, anyone uh, sticks out in particular to you? Maybe a name that uh, a lot of people might not be aware of? Yeah, I'm going to go with Jimmy Rolder, too, um, on the defensive side of the ball. And then on the offensive side of the ball, I'll say Matt Rolek and Tim War. Okay, great. Um, just a, just one or two more. And, and, again, I appreciate you guys taking time. But uh, Dontrell Jackson, Jr., um, it's a phenomenal athlete. Um, is an offensive lineman? Is it is it fun? Yet maybe with his abilities to just kind of shake loose and break things open, is it kind of nerve wracking as well? Pat, I'll start with you. I mean, talk about blocking for a, a dynamic quarterback like that, and and does it bring kind of fun yet a little bit of anxiety from time to time? <laughs> It's definitely fun for sure. I don't know about anxiety. I mean, he helps us out a lot with his athleticism and just being a stud overall. He'll break tackles and he'll he'll make room. Which is I mean, he's a great kid as well. So it's awesome to be teammates with him. Yeah. Deuce, same as far as Dontrell and, and, and yeah. having a guy that that really athletic and talented to block for. Yeah, I mean not really much on the anxiety side. Like, you know, if you ever mess up, like, there's always a good chance that he's going to break and make a play out of it. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's really fun and uh, makes it easy to block for him. Excellent. All right. Well, one more, and I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to throw it at both of you. So, money is no object here, okay? So, mm -hmm. I'm taking you two knuckleheads out to dinner. Where are we going? Whoever comes up, whoever – Whoever has an answer first, throw it out there. Come on now. I'll, I'll go with Gibson's downtown. That's my guy. I like yeah. that. Very good. Uh, yeah, I might have to go with that one too. Go with a steak? Yeah. Yep. Wow. You you guys would not be going easy on the uh, on the uh, credit card bill at all. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> it'd, it'd be fun though. Yeah. It would be fun. It would be fun. Well, hey, man, I, uh, again, appreciate you guys. and certainly appreciate talking to both of you and uh, now and, and obviously during your recruiting. And uh, I'm right there with you guys. I'm really, really excited for your season coming up. We're going to keep our fingers crossed and, and pray and everything else, and hopefully we get able to pull something off in the fall. And, uh, again, just appreciate you guys joining me. Have a great year, and, uh, you know, I'll be in touch soon. So thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks no so much. Thank Appreciate you. It.